What is good, everybody? Today we are diving into some WWE action figures that are upcoming that I don't really care for, man. Not not excited for them. Not excited for them at the slightest. And it feels like since the release of the uh, you know the news the other day that we got that was the I think it was about ten days ago or so we got the WWE Elite Series 113 and 114 leaked out, but we don't know what those look like just yet. However, at WrestleMania 40 we saw a lot of different new figures coming, and there's been little things trinkled out as we approach the San Diego Comic Con season, which should come. Yeah, it's about two months away or so we will have San Diego Comic-Con, but I wanted to dive into some of the figures that I'm just not looking forward to. Some figures that are upcoming that I, like, honestly am worried about. I'm honestly not looking forward to, to them at the slightest, and we'll we'll kind of dive into the lore and get into all that, man, but let's go ahead and dive into it and just discuss all these issues, and I would love to know if you, if you think I'm wrong. If you think I'm wrong down in the comment section below, you can let me know, but I'm just going to give you my thoughts and opinions here. So, with that being said, let's dive into it, man. First up, let's get into the full Ultimate Edition wave, the next Ultimate Edition wave, Ultimate Edition Series 23, I think it is, or is it 22? I think it's Ultimate Edition Series 22. This set features Jey Uso, it features Gunther, and it features John Cena. Now, all three of these, I think, honestly, are not the greatest of all time. All right, we'll break it down as we go, but just, just hear me out, and you can tell me what you think down in the comment section below. Now, I have touched on some of these things already on the channel, but I just want to discuss it further here. Now, starting off with Jey Uso, it's not necessarily a bad figure, but we're pretty much looking at a repaint of his ringside exclusive Uso's Bloodline pack, right? I mean, it's essentially a repaint. Now, you could say, you know, it is like the, the, the first step towards main event Jey Uso, but I feel like we have enough elites that you could possibly use to make that. You know, we have the Elite 90 and stuff. You can probably put a head sculpt on there, throw a custom shirt on there, and that be your main event Jey Uso. We have the Elite 114 Jey Uso that's coming later down the line, so this could be one that you don't necessarily need. Or you could say, I'm going to grab this, and then when that Elite comes out, I'm going to grab that shirt and put it on here, so I'll have an ultimate main event Jey Uso. You know, minus some different color changes and things like this. It's not going to be completely accurate, but I don't know. Just not my favorite release there, and I love Jey Uso, and I love that first go-around ultimate. I just think that you might as well just wait on the Elite at this juncture, you know, and just use older things, but I don't know. I, I just don't think there's anything that comes with this figure that is just mind-blowing that I have to have it, you know what I mean? But next up, we have Ultimate Gunther. Now, we discussed this already. I think he has a very odd look. At, to me, it's his legs, really, that looks the, the most weird, because at WrestleMania, I couldn't really tell. It looked fine in the case there and on display and in the images. It didn't look bad, but then when you got the promo pics and what have you, that's when the figure started to look a bit weird. I thought the torso looks a bit weird, even if it's a little accurate. I personally like the Elite 102 better. I think the Elite 102 Gunther is better than this Ultimate Edition. And then the legs just look weird, man. They have no muscular definition. They, It's like it goes straight down. It has no breakup of different body parts. It's just a very weird looking figure, man, in my opinion. I, I don't know. And I know a lot of people disagree with that take. I'm just laying it down the way that I see it from here, man. You guys can let me know what you think again, but the Ultimate Gunther, not really looking forward to it. And then the John Cena. I think the John Cena, everything but the torso looks fine. I just think that without the shirt on, this figure looks pretty ridiculous, and it does have the high top shoes with the short shorts mold, and it looks a bit weird combining those two things because I don't think he's worn high tops to the ring in a minute, all right? I don't think he's done that before. And it's not the biggest deal of all time, and you make it switch it out, all those different things. Those are definitely plausible, but I just think that without the shirt on, this figure looks very weird proportionately. And the gear, while not my favorite gear, I do like the gear. I think it's a solid figure. Now I don't have to get a custom of it, so that's cool. Throw it up on the shelf with the rest of the Cena collection. I just would have preferred to throw back John Cena here, but, you know, we'll have to see what we get in the fan takeover vote. But that entire <laughs> Ultimate Edition wave, I think, is a step down from our Ultimate Edition series. 21 and maybe even our Ultimate Edition Series 20. The, the set that features Roman Reigns, Asuka, and Undertaker while it does have a re-released Undertaker Ultimate that's not that great, that Asuka and Roman are two fantastic figures and then Cody Rhodes held his own in that Ultimate Edition Series 21. While Sami Zayn was too tall or, you know, it wasn't perfect and then you throw in the Kevin Owens who was tiny, that kind of offset that Ultimate Edition Series 21, but I don't know. It, it's, I don't know. They're kind of having a mid-off right now between Ultimate Edition Series 21 and 22 to me but you can let me know what you guys Moving think. Moving on forward, man, we're getting into the Defining Moments line. Two figures out of this set I don't really care for, man. I'm not really the biggest fans of. Now, we did see LA Knight in Elite Series 108, and I didn't care for the formula, and it looks like they're rehashing the exact same formula we got 
with his Elite 108 figure, which I don't know, the legs are a little bit weird here. They could have used a different torso. I think the torso that they use on Macho Man or hell, even the torso that they use, the new Build-A-Figure torso, the one that they used on the Muhammad Ali out of the Territory pack or hell, even the Build-A-Figure British Bulldog, that same torso. I think that torso probably could have worked for LA Knight as well, but it's not the biggest deal. It's just, this is kind of that Zack Ryder, the Mizdow style torso, which I think could have been switched out. And then the thighs, I just think the legs look a bit weird, but not, even, not only that, I just didn't think that LA Knight really belonged in the Defining Moments pack right here. I think as a ringside exclusive in the Defining Moments pack, they could have made LA Knight a top picks. This could have been a top picks repaint of the Elite 108, and I think it would have sold just fine about the same. I don't think... And then you have the Ultimate Edition that's coming for LA Knight. I just don't think this was a necessary piece right here. And so for that reason, I just... It's not that I don't like the figure necessarily. It's just I. It's just a skip. It's just a... What, what, what could have we done? We could have done something a little bit better there. But then we even have the Defining Moments Kane that's coming. And I said the same thing. We have the Ultimate Edition. We have two different Ultimate Editions of Kane. And I know they're not all the way the exact same. But I think the Ultimate Edition Kane is better than this Defining Moments. And I just think that that's two spots in the Defining Moments line. You know, you have your Pipe Bomb, your Pipe Bomb Punk. You have your RVD. But I think that these other two, there, could, there had to be two other spots that would have been better in my personal opinion. Or two other talents or moments that could have went in these spots. You can let me know what you think, but that's just how I feel there. I think that they could have, I don't know, the decisions could have been better here in this Defining Moments way. So for those reasons, those are figures that not that much looking forward to. But we're moving on to the From the Vault series here, man. From the Vault series. We have a couple figures in the From the Vault series that not that much looking forward to. Okay, first of all, we got to get out of the way. The first From the Vault series, batted a thousand. You know, we always talk about nobody batting a thousand. I think Mattel and Ringside Collectibles, they batted a thousand in the, the first From the Vault series. I think that every single pick was a home run. Uh, if I had to pick one that I didn't necessarily want in there, it would probably be Ultimate Warrior, but the rest of them were just such a chef's kiss selection, and even that Ultimate Warrior was tough to buy. I legitimately, I think it was like eight, nine months ago, I spent 50, 60 bucks on that figure in the aftermarket, so that's probably why I didn't want that guy in there, but I do think that, you know, it was a sought-after Ultimate Warrior. It has double-jointed arms now, but that From the Vault Series 1 was a damn banger, but From the Vault Series 2, I think we got a couple stinkers in here, man. Got a couple stinkers, and I don't think that this full wave is going to be able to compare to Series 1. Now, when we review Series 2, the From the Vault wave, and get into that, we will touch on that. We'll take a look at it, and we'll see, you know, how they compare which From the Vault series is better. But I think in a best of seven set, I think I would take Series 1 From the Vault in five games. I think they're winning that series in five games. They could just sweep them, you know what I mean? I think that Series 1 was so good. But here in Series 2, we do have the three-pack Tribal Chief versus Beast Incarnate Heyman figure. Didn't think this was a necessary plug here, as great as the figure is as awesome as Paul Heyman's elite figure is right here just doesn't seem like that belonged right there I didn't think that that figure was super skipped over I know that it was out of stock like it came in stock on Amazon for a while it was there available to people sold out a couple times restocked a couple times then people were finding it in damn TJ Maxx Ross's of the world your Burlington Coat Factories Brad they were finding that thing everywhere man so and it was like 15 bucks 20 bucks and I know a lot of people cashed in on that and even resold that pack on the aftermarket because people, you know, were, were wanting that figure. And I guess you could say, oh, well, people wanted it, so it belonged in the From the Vault series. But for me, the Heyman figure, as great as it is, I love that suited Heyman. I think I have three or four of them. I just don't think that we needed another one that soon. Even just repainting it slightly would have been great to see. But who am I, Brad? I think that's kind of an S selection. But then the other figure in the From the Vault series that I don't really care for is going to be Rikishi, man. It's going to be Rikishi. I touched on this a little bit already, and I've kind of touched on these things in this video already before. But just to regurgitate some figures that are coming out that I do not necessarily care for, this From the Vault Rikishi just doesn't belong, man. I just don't think this belongs. We we've see, we saw the, the initial Elite 27. We saw the Hall of Champions. And then we got a Rikishi in, a, in the Greatest Hits Series 1 that was the Hall of Champions. Champions figure redone. So now they're redoing the Elite 27. It just, I don't know, man. Like, make a new damn Rikishi. Put a damn Rikishi in a different wave, man. Put him in some other line. I don't think that you needed to have him here in the From the Vault series. I just don't... It, it, uh, first of all, he's already been in a Greatest Hits line, so we've already seen a double-jointed, re-released, previously released Rikishi, and then you're doing it yet again in another re-release line. It's just, what the hell are we doing, Brad? I don't know. I just didn't like that pick. As great as the figure is, I just think that there was other figures that could have plugged in right there, so that's my stance there, but I think the last figure that I really want to get into here today with you on the figures that are coming that I do not really care for, it's going to be Elite 110 Roman Reigns. Every other figure in Elite 110 I'm looking forward to, and I will say 
say, looking at different images of this figure, it definitely looks a lot better than I initially thought. When I was looking at it through the glass, you know, I want to say as close as I could get my face to the Roman Reigns in the glass or look at it on my phone or my coverage in person at WrestleMania 40, I could probably get maybe seven or eight inches away from the figure, I think, if I put my face right up to the glass. And every angle I looked at this figure didn't look that great, man. Didn't look that great. I think the elite boots on here look weird. They already put the ultimate boots on the Ninja Turtles Shredder Roman Reigns, so I don't know why you couldn't just redo that and put the Ultimate Edition boots on here. So that looks a little bit weird. I think the red color's weird, and I just think that this is a missed opportunity. We've talked about so very, so many times, so many times we talked about it, you know, the, the head sculpt, while the likeness isn't as bad as we initially thought, the fade is incorrect, the hair's incorrect, the beard's incorrect. It's not faded, tapered beard like we wanted, or at least like I've wanted. I've spoke about this a million times, but there it is there. And then Finn Balor. I didn't even plug Elite 111 Finn Balor in here because I didn't even want to go down the whole damn rabbit hole again. Not that the figure's necessarily bad. I think the Roman pisses me off more than the Finn because it kind of seems that they planted their flag in that new Finn Balor formula, which does upset me. But uh, I, I still am kind of looking forward to the figure because I love Finn so much. But at the same time, this Elite 110 Roman Reigns just isn't getting it done, man. He's not getting it done. He's, he's failing right here. And hopefully soon we will see a damn Ultimate Edition Roman or just any type of Roman with the correct beard, the correct haircut, everything correct on the figure. And everything will be right in the world, and we can all sleep good at night. I mean, I can't even, you know, there's there's specific moments in the Mattel history that have, you know, shook me to my core. You know, there are things like this that exist, and one of those things was the AJ Styles torso. When they fixed the AJ Styles torso and they switched it to the Sin Cara torso, something that I begged for forever from Mattel, something I never even thought they would even entertain as much as I wanted it. And so that was a whole thing there. And so, you know, the, those are different things, man. But, oh man, that's definitely one of those. I think if they change the John Cena shoe mold, you know, for good on his elites, if they do the Roman Reign faded beard, if they do the Finn Balor faded beard, those are different things that could really, you know, uh, be cemented in history, similar to that AJ Styles... I'm sure there's things that I'm not thinking of that could probably fit into that category as well. But before we get out of here, man, a huge shout-out to our Patreon members of the MDT YouTube channel. Huge shout-out to Elia Sib Romo. I think that's how you say it. He was a new sign-up just the other day, so I greatly appreciate my brother over there for signing up. Appreciate you, man. Thank you guys so very much for your continued support. You guys are absolutely incredible. But I am getting out of here, man. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at My Damn Toys. I will see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I will catch you guys later. Also, don't forget to leave me your thoughts, man. I, I wanted to go back and forth down in the comment section below. It's the reason I make these videos. I like to measure where you guys are at versus where I'm at and like to compare and contrast. That's why we rank stuff, and that's why we... You know, I like to see what's good and what's bad and, you know, kind of compare and compete and stats and sports and stuff like that, man. That's right up my alleyway. So let me know what you think, but I'm getting the hell out.